quietly revealed this past August, The Tourist from Shinen Multimedia has arrived on Nintendo Switch and very quickly left a strong impression. With its voxelized world design, smooth frame rate, and unique gameplay, it's unlike anything the team has worked on to date, and it's brilliant. But you'd be remiss for not quite understanding what the game is all about and why it's worth a look. Beneath the deceptively simplistic visual design lies one of Switch's most capable graphics engines, an engine which never drops a frame and never makes you wait more than a second. It's fast, it's beautiful, and it's worth checking out. And that's exactly what we're doing here today. This is a game that impressed me so much that I simply had to produce a video showcasing what has been achieved. We'll check out the game in both portable and docked modes, of course, while putting its performance to the test. But more importantly, I want to quickly explore the legacy of Shinen Multimedia and highlight what it is that makes this small studio and its technology so interesting. So, let's dive in. Based in Munich, Germany, Shinen Multimedia has quietly produced games since 1999 almost exclusively for Nintendo platforms. Their history dates back to the demo scene days under the name Abyss, where they produced gorgeous demos for platforms such as the Amiga. Members of Abyss would go on to form Shinen, and they've been producing games ever since. You can feel those demo scene roots in just about every game they've released. Its early work on consoles such as Game Boy Advance still impressed today. Iridian 3D appeared early in the life of the GBA and offers a beautiful pseudo 3D world for the players to blast through. It's one of the more impressive games released for the system. This was followed up with the sequel, Iridian 2, which makes the jump to vertical shooting with even more impressive visual scaling and music. Games like Iridian on a platform such as the GBA really help demonstrate the ambitions of the studio from a technical standpoint. And it would continue with the Nanostray series on Nintendo DS, among others. Games which deliver a smooth 60 frames per second experience with beautiful 3D shooting action on rather limited hardware. Both games still hold up today and really showcase what is possible on the Nintendo DS hardware, especially in the right hands. And the same is true of Nintendo 3DS, where games like Jet Rocket 2 also deliver a smooth, stable 60 frames per second in stereoscopic 3D on a platform that often struggled to hit those high frame rates. Nano Assault wasn't quite as smooth, but it definitely shows off some impressive visual features for the hardware. But Switch owners may be most familiar with their work on Fast RMX, an updated conversion of Fast Racing Neo originally released for Wii U and released alongside the launch of Switch. Fast RMX offers a whole slew of modern effects and techniques in an unwavering 60 frames per second, and it's gorgeous, still one of the best looking games on Switch. Yet aside from Fast RMX and a port of Art of Balance, Shinen has remained relatively quiet this generation, at least until Gamescom 2019 where they unveiled the game we're discussing today, The Tourist. So what is The Tourist? Well at its core this is an exploration driven adventure game of sorts. It's a game that has you traveling across various islands, solving the mysteries below the surface. The concept is simple, yet the execution is perfect. It's never explicitly spelled out what you should do at any one point, but it's so satisfying when the solution finally clicks. Each island is a beautiful chunk with its own themes and concepts to explore. Laser Island is one of my favorites. It includes a wide range of shops to mess around in, including the theater, a music store selling songs from previous Shinen games, and even an arcade with three original games. More on that later. At its core then, all of this is driven by the team's in-house engine. According to Shinen's Manfred Linsner, the tourist utilizes a deferred renderer based on the work done on Fast RMX. In order to maintain a smooth frame rate, the team has once again opted to utilize a dynamic resolution system. In docked mode, resolution can vary from a maximum of 1080p to slightly less than 50% on both axes. 
Typically, outdoor areas average around 810p to 900p, while indoor areas stick closer to the full 1080p in most cases. Portable mode uses DRS as well with a maximum resolution of 720p and 50% of that on each axis for the lowest. It typically jumps between 612p and 720p in this mode. The team has also opted to avoid utilizing any form of anti-aliasing as pixelated edges fit directly into the voxelized visual style. Hard edges wind up looking perfectly acceptable in this specific game as a result. It's not something we see often, but it does work here. The engine itself then is mostly deferred, but certain effects are forward rendered. In this case, deferred rendering was a choice made that allows for a range of optimizations and increased artistic freedom during development. Perhaps the most unusual visual element here centers on the voxelized nature of the world. The tourist still utilizes triangles as its primitive of choice, but the way in which the models were created is suitably unique. Essentially, the team used something known as Magic of Voxel, an 8-bit voxel editor and renderer. I'm looking at the software here myself, and as you can see, it's possible to rapidly carve out and create some rather unique designs. It's a fun tool to use, and the creations are often beautiful to behold, making them a perfect choice for a game such as this. For the tourist, then, Sheenan created the designs in Magic of Voxel, then exported these models to Maya, where they were touched up and converted into a format usable by their game engine. This is more demanding than you might expect, however. You see, the nature of voxels means that, when translated to polygons, the models wind up sharing very few vertices, unlike typical 3D models. This is all just for the base models, though. To further enhance the visuals, things like grass, flowers, rocks, and animals are placed into the environment, but to save on space, these are generated procedurally, saving both time and space. This ties directly into both loading and file size, two key points to any Sheenan game. At this point, it's unlikely that the team will ever create a game larger than one gigabyte, at least that's how it seems. You see, the tourist comes in at just 231 megabytes. Furthermore, the game is virtually free of any loading screens. Traveling between islands and screens is nearly instantaneous. In fact, even the boot up sequence is ridiculously fast from dashboard to title screen to game. It's a revelation. Another key feature of the tourist is its lighting. Everything is rendered internally in high dynamic range, allowing improved contrast between bright and darker regions, while subsurface scattering is also used on characters despite the abstract design. This is all combined with a strong depth of field effect, which lends the game a rather tilt-shift appearance. Basically, they've managed to create this hybrid of stylized, voxelized designs viewed through a more realistic lens, with lighting that behaves more naturally. It's like peering into a hand-built diorama. Being that this is a deferred render, that also means that a lot of dynamic lights are possible. The spotlight from this guardian is our first taste of this, and it's beautiful with the way it snakes around highlighting the environment. When you eventually get your hands on his head then, that even casts proper shadows, like most other lights in the game. Or how about these fireflies? Every single one of them is its own light source. And really though, the best stuff comes from closely examining the finer details, the artistry poured into each area of the game. Take the rain lab, for instance. The streamers blowing in front of the air conditioner combined with the appearance of rain streaming down the windows lends the game a very strong atmosphere. Or the way the water reflects its surroundings as platforms bob up and down. When you enter this dungeon, the light streaming in through the entrance combines with long shadows to create a very effective atmosphere. And how about the seaweed deep below the ocean floor moving gently with the water as fish and bubbles swarm the player? Or even the heavy rain on Soggy Island? Or the way plants move as you run past them? And how you can trample the grass if you run through it rapidly? Taken in isolation, none of these effects or techniques are especially unique, per se, 
but it's the way in which everything comes together that really appeals to me. It's a game where every corner is carefully trimmed to perfection. There's no skips, hiccups, glitches, or other oddities here to detract from the experience. It just feels perfect. Beyond this, I'm a big fan of the material choices made here. The Taurus emits any sort of surface filtering, lending the game a rather pixelated aesthetic, which I think perfectly suits the voxelized design of the assets. It's especially effective when combined with the often rather complex scenery, where a rocky wall can be made up of many different voxel points like this. Back here on the strip then, I want to talk again about the arcade games. First from a gameplay perspective, basically there's a guy outside the arcade that offers you money if you can beat his high score on all three games. What this offers is a purpose for each of these games beyond simply toying around, and beating these scores requires sufficient mastery of each game which pushes you to play them longer. The most impressive of the three games then is Fast, an homage to Fast RMX and its prequels. It's designed to simulate the look of classic superscalar style games, or perhaps recall something like F-Zero. The mechanics are surprisingly solid and it's addictive trying to beat that high score. The machine also uses a shader designed to simulate an old arcade monitor, though for my money I think it goes a bit too far. A good CRT will appear much sharper than this. The next game involves collecting sticks of dynamite in order while avoiding enemies, or gobbling them up with a power pellet of sorts. It's basically Pac-Man meets Jetpack, and it's pretty good. What's crazier is that they used a music program created by Shinnan designed to simulate the sound of older retro arcade hardware, so the music itself is rather authentic. Lastly, there's this Arkanoid-style blockbreaker game with a few interesting twists of its own. All three games feature period-appropriate sound, which feels authentic to the visual design they're targeting here. Outside of the arcade games, however, the music and sound design also deserves a mention. The Tourist features proper surround sound, unlike many Switch games, and delivers a strong soundtrack with a nice mix of atmospheric music like this... and more upbeat tracks like this. I love it. So, it looks great, it loads super fast, and requires very little space on your Switch, but what about performance? This just happens to be one of Shinen's specialties. 60 frames per second has long been its focus, with nearly every game it's developed over the years running at this target frame rate. This is of course true for the Tourist as well. It aims to deliver 60 frames per second, and it very rarely falters. You might catch one or two small blips on the frame time graph if you look closely, but it's exceedingly rare. In fact, this is one of the most stable performers I've tested this generation, on par with the absolute best from Nintendo itself. Looking at more than three hours of captured footage, I encountered just three dips on the frame time graph, that is, three dropped frames in total. The frame rate is basically just about perfect. And this is something I've always appreciated with Shinen games, aside from, say, Nano Assault on 3DS, which has lots of slowdown. There's usually this focus on delivering a completely smooth, stable 60 FPS no matter the cost. And the Tourist is of course super responsive and always smooth. And this holds true for portable mode as well, where the frame rate maintains its target throughout the experience just as we see in docked mode. Now situations like this are certainly rare, but also kind of interesting. For a Digital Foundry video, this just means that there isn't usually a lot to say during the performance analysis section, but at the same time, I feel the team deserves special kudos for delivering a game with such stable performance, since performance this stable is really quite rare. Well done, Shinin.
Since the beginning, Shinen has always been a studio that pushes hardware to the next level, but The Tourist goes even further than just pushing visuals. I genuinely think this is the best game the studio has ever made, and the first one to deliver its own really memorable, unique atmosphere. As you visit each island in the game world, it's never immediately clear how to achieve your goal, or even what the goals are, but due to the small scale of each island, it's extremely satisfying to poke at the game until you begin to understand what you must do. It's nowhere near as abstract as something like Fez, mind you, but it recalls that same sense of wonder and exploration. For me then, the tourist has become quite the surprise. It's extremely engaging and fun to play in a way that I didn't fully anticipate. With its wonderful atmosphere, excellent soundtrack, tight gameplay, and beautiful visuals, this is a game well worth checking out, at least if it looks like something you might enjoy. Personally, I can't recommend it enough. But that's it for the moment. If you enjoyed this video, as always, be sure to like and subscribe, ring the notification bell at the top for instant updates, and of course, follow us over on Twitter. I'll see you next time.